Welcome to video clip 3.7 in which we check soundness. So how do we check soundness? Um, what we did so far is we have transformed our BPMN process model to PetriNet. We uh, learned how to create a reachability graph from a PetriNet. And now we want to use the reachability graph to check soundness. Uh, and of course we need to check uh, each of the three soundness properties. First, we need to check if a starting in state i, so that's one token in, st in the net, exactly on this place i, all paths will reach a state in which there is one token on place o. Regardless of what I do, I will always reach a state in which there is a token on o. If a state is reached with a token on place o, all other places are empty to avoid remaining activities and live lock. And three, for each transition t in the PetriNet, there is an arc in the reachability graph that is marked t, so there are no dead transitions. There is a fairness property that means all decisions that a process can take will be taken eventually, so transitions do not starve. That's a, a typical fairness property that we um, also assume here for the analysis. Okay, so um, first we translate the process model to PetriNet. This is what we did in the previous video uh, clip. And we did this for this um, register claim process where we can uh, receive a claim by surface mail, fax or website. And then we have, um, we in some ca uh, cases need to register the claim. In all cases we decide on the claim coverage and either um, prepare send and uh, prepare letter of approval or prepare letter of rejection and the process then uh, terminates. And we discussed previously that um, how the PetriNet, the respective PetriNet looks like. Now we can, uh, or we need to uh, create the reachability graph on the basis of this PetriNet and I try to um, do this. Um, so I will First of all, the initial state is the state i. And in the state i, only one transition can fire. That is the silent transition that we see here. And we are in state p1. In state p1, either of the three transitions can fire. So we have a, either the upper transition can fire, bringing us to state p2. The middle transition can fire, bringing us to state P3. And the lower transition can fire, bringing us to state P4. In P2, uh, we can only reach state P5. And we reach that by um, executing the receive claim by surface mail. I'll represent this receive claim surface mail, RCS, should read, receive, claim by surface mail. Brings us to P5. These two other alternatives, so from P3 uh, I come to P6 with receive, claim by fax message, so that's an RCF. Okay, um, then uh, from P5 and P6, uh, I come to P7 by either of the silent transitions we have here. Then we can go to P9 by receive claim by the, or, or register, sorry, by register claim. From P4, um, I can execute, I can come to P8. by register claim by website, so that's register claim by website. And from P8, by firing of this silent transition, I can come to P9 as well. All right, so I'm now at uh, P9. From um, P9, I will continue here with, so that brings us to P10. From P9, I come to P10 with 
decide on claim coverage, so that's a DCC, so that's um, exactly where it, it continues there. Brings us to P10. In P10 I have again two alternatives. I can go the upper or the lower branch here. So I can go to P11. Or I can go to P12. In P11 I can uh, prepare letter of approval. bringing us to P13, prepare letter of approval, and in P12 I can prepare letter of rejection, prepare letter of rejection, and in P13 I can reach the final place O. Okay, that should be the complete uh, reachability graph of this model. Now we can uh, try to think about uh, soundness. So can we use this reachability graph to check soundness? Well, the first property is, regardless of what I do, from the initial um, state I will always come to the final state. So from the state I, I can will always, regardless of what I do, regardless of which path through the reachability graph I take, I will reach O. And that is perfectly uh, true, as we see here easily. So. Um, I don't need to go through all this, so regardless of which path um, is taken in the reachability graph, I will always come from state I to state O. It's important to stress that because the reachability graph and the Petronet look quite similar, um, it's a completely different concept here because each node in the graph represents a state of the Petronet. And for instance, looking at state P2, where there is one token on P2. So the state where there is one token on P2 is represented by exactly this uh, state P2. And then by executing receive claim by surface mail, I can reach a new state. So reachability graph is really about states and state transition Petrinet could assume. And therefore, it's very useful for uh, checking soundness. So we already checked the first soundness property. Second uh, soundness property is if there is a token on the place O, then there is no other token in the net. So we need to check each state whether there is a token on, on O. Well, we just find one, and that is the last one. And in this, uh, in this state, there is only a token in O, there is no other token in the net. Therefore, also property 2 is, is true. Finally, we need to check for dead transitions. How can we now check for dead transitions? Well. Um, we need to look if for each transition that is in the um, that is in uh, in the Petri net, if there is a state transition in the reachability graph. So we can check that for um, let's make it you now the highlighter receive claim by surface mail. Yes, we have it here. Receive claim by fax message. We have it here. That one we have here. Register claim. Where's register claim? Here's register claim. Decide on claim coverage. We have we have prepare letter of approval. We have prepare letter of rejection. And we also, of course, have the, the silent transitions, which I didn't go through here. So obviously, each, um, and that's also clear when I explain the, the scenario, each activity can participate in a correct um, process instance. Therefore, uh, I can say that the PetriNet is sound, and since properties 1, 2, and 3 are met, the PetriNet is sound, and we can deduce by the transformation that also the BPMN model is also sound. And I don't think we need to discuss it here, but it should be clear that once um, we start the process here, we can take any decision, afterwards we end up here. So the concepts are very, let's say the Petri nets are very um, similar to in this respect as the behavior, uh, to describe the behavior, and therefore the Petri nets are very useful also, of course, for this formal analysis. Okay, um, the second example that I'd like to briefly discuss with you is the one which does not work so nicely, where we spotted these incorrect behavior in the first place. What we did is we mapped this also, this VPMN diagram to a PetriNet and end up with this PetriNet structure. There is uh, some concurrency, therefore the reachability graph would definitely not fit on one slide and I will not go um, through. 
Um, therefore, I will try to use um, the tool, try to use the signal view tool, which we um, see here now. So that is the same PetriNet that we've seen here before, and this tool allows um, to simulate the PetriNet, to walk through the PetriNet and see all the different possible behaviors. And I try to start this now. And you see here that the first transition is now, the silent transition is uh, marked in green. So by clicking on that, we can execute it. So the transition removes a token from the place I, puts a token on place P1. So that receive order is enabled. So enable transitions are represented in green. So I can um, click on that, meaning it now fires, putting a token in P2. Here the concurrency starts, so two token are put, one token on P3, one token on P4, and this is where the, where the concurrency starts. Um, so we can, I can execute them in any order. Let's say um, I send the invoice, um, I uh, execute this one, I receive the payment. So uh, no, no other transition is uh, enabled, only the package products is transition is enabled. If I execute it, I can, um, the transition issue shipment can fire. And now there are tokens on P5 and P10 allowing this silent transition to fire as well. Putting a token on P9, which enables the check payment. And well, now we have a situation that two transitions are enabled. So here, when there is a token on P13, two transitions are enabled. We could select the upper one, which is the, the nice case, and then there's a token in O, and the process comes to a standstill, so that's a nice behavior. Um, that um, is the nice behavior, but we uh, learned that in any behavior, so if any decision is taken, the behavior should be correct. Therefore, I can step back. So I use uh, this to step back a little bit. Okay, so again, this um, join uh, transition is performed, check payment is concerned, uh, is check payment transition fires. And now there um, I select this situation where um, the uh, payment is not correct. Therefore, I need to send an update to the invoice. The update to the invoice put here is executed. This silent transition is executed. If I, well, this one is executed, receive payment is executed, and then the process comes to a halt. So um, this transition, the joint transition, transition can no longer execute, um, and therefore there's an execution in which I do not reach the final place O. You see the final place O is empty, and there is a, a token on P10, and the process is stuck. Therefore, uh, we see this um, behavior, the faulty behavior here, and if I, um, you could use also this animation to really draw draw the reachability graph, um, and we'll see also in the reachability graph that we reach the state P10. So in the reachability graph, there is a state P10 that does not have any outgoing edges. And therefore, um, you, are, you show, we have shown that the PetriNet is not sound, and therefore that the BPMN process model is also not sound. All right, so here we will, um, I think, by discussion, um, you are with me that if I sketch like this, so there's the whole reachability graph, which has a certain structure, and there's a place P10, and this place P10 is the final uh, state, or this state P10, I have to say, not the place, but the state P10 um, is a deadlock, so the system can no longer, so in a token is here at P10, that's exactly the state indicated here by P10, um, the process, uh, the PetriNet cannot fire, and the output uh, output place is not reached, and therefore, of course, this violates uh, the soundness property. Especially, it violates properties one, two, and uh, three. So, um, the three is violated because sent updated invoice. So, sent updated invoice cannot participate in a, a correct execution. So also a property uh, three is violated, property one is violated because not in all decisions I reach O. Um, and um, therefore the process model cannot be sound. And therefore the BPMN process model can also not be sound. 
Okay, so um, we, we all uh, witnessed that the soundness checking using reachability uh, graphs can be quite uh, cumbersome, especially when we have large process models with, with concurrency in it. Uh, the state, the reachability graph and the number of states, we say the state space can be um, very large, therefore we cannot do it, of course, by hand. Uh, but there's a nice uh, set of tools available and provided by servicetechnology.org. So soundness checking can be done by software tools and also these tools are um, embedded in the uh, Signavio uh, process modeler. Um, servicetechnology.org provides powerful tools to analyze formal properties of services and business processes. It is developed by um, academic partners from the University of um, Rostock from the Humboldt Universität zu Berlin and from the Technical University in Eindhoven. And the tools are also available for download, so if you uh, are interested in the formal um, analysis of process um, models or of services, of composed services, where um, these you know, systems can also be applied, you are very welcome to take a look at this website. This concludes video clip 3.7 in which we checked soundness. We use the translation of a VPMN process model to a PetriNet. We developed, built its reachability graph. Um, we used this graph uh, and checked uh, the PetriNet for soundness. We could check for all three uh, properties. And um, if all properties are met, the PetriNet is sound and the VPMN process model is sound. If uh, one of the properties is violated, then the PetriNet is not sound and the VPMN process model can also uh, not be sound. And finally, I, um, I gave you a, a link, um, a reference to softwaretechnology.org where you find software tools to analyze uh, processes from a, from a behavioral site. In this short video, I'd like to summarize week three. So we started with uh, taking a look at process behavior. So what is the semantics of a business process model, um, especially the execution behavior. We designed a business process that um, has a uh, behavior anomaly that got stuck. Um, and um, therefore, to detect these kinds of situations, processes getting stuck or processes are not able, processes are not able to reach um, the defined end. Uh, we looked at soundness properties. First, we uh, took a look at structural soundness, so that's a structural property of business uh, process models. And we uh, showed a way how to achieve it, even um, if the business process has several um, start events on, and several end events. We investigated soundness as a correctness criterion, um, criterion and also discussed why soundness is useful and what are the specific properties. We learned three properties. Um, that contribute to soundness. In terms of simulation, we uh, showed a step-through simulation um, that provides um, a nice means to validate a business um, process model. We also um, analyzed the performance uh, by quantitative simulation, um, limited to the scope of one process instance, and we made a few remarks on multiple instances simulation as well. In the bonus material, we took a bit more formal uh, look at soundness. And first of all, we mapped BPMN models to the uh, formal model of PetriNets. Um, we discussed the reachability graph of a PetriNet, so what are the states that are reachable from the initial state of the PetriNet, and we used the reachability graph to check uh, soundness. Um, this bonus material has a bit more formal flavor, but I, um, I encourage all of you to, um, to really spend some time and look into also this bonus material. You may, you may find it interesting.